This program is a part of a series of studies that our Pastor Gion has prepared for you. Welcome to Victory Church Odessa. Our goal is to exalt the name of our Lord Jesus and to encourage you to develop more faith by reflecting on the Bible. We hope you will enjoy this program. Now let me introduce you to our Pastor Gian. Gospel Parallels, Episode 74, April 10, 2024. This is the Bible study with Victory Church. The topic of today is Calming the Storm. And I am Gian, the founding pastor of Victory Church. Welcome to another episode of this series. Last week, we studied what is to follow Jesus. Today, we are going to study Calming the Storm. The reading comes from the easy-to-read version, and we read, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, please, Lord, guide us through this study. Amen. Please, Jeho, put the scripture on the screen. Thank you. Matthew 8, 23 through 27. Jesus got into a boat, and his followers went with him. After the boat left the shore, a very bad storm began on the lake. The waves covered the boat, but Jesus was sleeping. The followers went to him and woke him. They said, Lord, save us. We will drown. Jesus answered, Why are you afraid? You don't have enough faith. Then he stood up and gave a command to the wind and the water. The wind stopped, and the lake became very calm. The men were amazed. They said, What kind of man is this? Even the wind and the water obey him. Mark 4, 35 through 41. That day at, the, at evening, Jesus said to his followers, Come with me across the lake. So they left the crowd behind and went with Jesus in the boat he was already in. There were also other boats that went with them. A very bad wind came up on the lake. The waves were coming over the sides and into the boat, and it was almost full of water. Jesus was inside the boat, sleeping with his head on a pillow. The followers went and woke him. They said, Teacher, don't you care about us? We are going to drown. Jesus stood up and gave command to the wind and the water. He said, Quiet, be still. Then the wind stopped, and the lake became calm. He said to his followers, Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were very afraid and asked each other, What kind of man is this? Even the wind and the water obey him. Luke 8, 22 through 25 One day Jesus and his followers got into a boat. He said to them, Come with me across the lake. And so they started across, across. While they were sailing, Jesus slept. A big storm blew across the lake, and the boat began to fill with water. They were in danger. The followers went to Jesus and woke him. They said, Master, Master, we will drown. Jesus got up. He gave a command to the wind and the waves. The wind stopped and the lake became calm. He said to his followers, Where is your faith? They were afraid and amazed. They said to each other, What kind of man is this? He commands the wind and the water, and they obey him. <laughs> As you can see here, the Lord Jesus is again moving, going places. You know, my friend, that is something that you need to consider. If you, for example, you are stuck in a place, physically speaking, you are in a place and you don't go anywhere. You are just stuck in that room. Could be a little apartment, a little room, or it could be a big house, but just yourself 
and you are stuck there, you don't go places, that could affect many things, including your mental health. You also could be stuck mentally. Have you thought about that possibility? It's when you are not learning anything new. It, basically, you, you are stuck. It's just the same ideas, the same thoughts. It is like you cannot move forward to anything. And the same thing applies to your emotions. If you are stuck emotionally, that means that you are not able to enjoy life. Sometimes problems in life, disappointments can make you feel not just disappointed, but bitter. Then is when you are stuck emotionally, the lack of forgiveness, for example. But also, spiritually speaking, you can be stuck. I have seen people that way, and it is because they close their minds to the reading of the scripture, to being exposed to God's word. Today you are investing time here listening to this teaching. And that is fantastic, and I thank you, but you are doing the right thing. Not because you are listening to me. It's because you are willing to listen to a preacher. You are willing to at least give the opportunity to somebody to tell you things. Spiritually speaking, there are people that are stuck because they refuse totally to consider what other people are saying in regards of the Bible, the Lord Jesus, God, eternity, church. People can be stuck spiritually because of past experiences, something that happened with churches or pastors, etc. People can be stuck spiritually, as you can imagine, but that's not God's plan for you. The plan for the Lord God always is that you will move forward, that you will change. Changing is very, very important. You need to, to be willing always to change and to learn. So let's see what else we, do we find here in this passage. One thing that is very interesting, we read the same idea, the same concept, the same story described by Matthew, Mark, and Luke. The Gospel of John says nothing about it. But Mark says something that the other two writers don't mention. is the fact that there were other boats with them, not just one boat. So other people were following the Lord Jesus and his disciples. You know, my friend, you could be a great influence for others. Negatively and positively. Think for a moment about your life today. Whatever is what you have done during the day, or whatever is what you are going to do later today, is going to make an influence in people. Because if you choose to continue being stuck in the same place, somehow you are influencing others to do the same, even if they don't see you. Do you realize that when they don't see you, when people that know you, they just see that you are the same old person, stuck? It could be physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. You are influencing people in a negative way. But if rather than doing that, you decide to, to take a step moving forward, trying to change, trying to learn new things, slowly you are going to, to be loosening up a little. And they will see in you that you are changing. Changing is good. Your change can affect others. Can you imagine for a second that because of a new air, a new wave coming from God into your soul, will make you feel better and make you feel different and will inspire you to see life in a different way and just experience life 
from God's perspective. That could be something that can inspire some people. Imagine individuals that are also stuck, but suddenly they see you that you are changing slowly. Then is when you become an influence for other people. We read here that there was a moment when the Lord Jesus decided to take a nap. And, and of course, we read about a pillow there in the boat. And you wonder what a pillow is doing in a boat. <laughs> well, it's, it's obvious. People also take naps in boats like any other vehicle. If the trip is very long or they have to stay there on that vehicle, it's normal that people will take a nap. They had a pillow there. But the interesting thing is that the Lord Jesus for real was asleep. Why do you think the Lord Jesus was sleeping? Well, what are the reasons? Well, usually you go to sleep when you are really tired, you are exhausted. And that is what happened to our Lord. So he was really tired, but he was fully aware of what will happen in the future. The Lord God always knows what is going to happen. The Lord God not necessarily sleeps. The person, the human individual, Jesus, he was tired and he wanted to rest and he went to sleep. It's exactly in that moment when the, the storm came and it was a huge storm. Remember, there was water that was actually coming so strongly into the boat that they thought, this is the end of us. Matthew says uh, one word different than Mark and Luke when the disciples came to wake him up. Matthew used the, uses the word Lord. Mark uses the word teacher, and Luke uses the word master. So let's talk a little bit about the, those three words, because although they is the same person, our Lord Jesus Christ, the meaning is, is a little bit different. Lord represents someone that rules upon your life. That's your Lord. Jesus, the Lord. Jesus, my Lord. But also, the Lord Jesus is our teacher because he teaches us through his commandments and through his parables and anecdotes and stories, things that we need to learn. So certainly the Lord Jesus is Lord. The Lord Jesus is our teacher. But Luke uses the word master, which means you are my owner. I belong to you. You own me, which is another beautiful thing. The Lord Jesus, Savior of the world, teaching you things, but he wants to be more than a teacher for you. So who is the, the Lord Jesus to you? So he is your what? You know that there is a passage that says that only through the Holy Spirit, someone can call Jesus Lord. It's the Holy Spirit that gives you that conviction, conviction that Jesus is Lord. Jesus Christ, our Lord, our teacher, our Savior, our Master. He is. The disciples, going through that storm, they saw it from the wrong angle. And I would like you to think for a moment about what happens with uh, individuals that are just starting their, their walk in Christianity. Most believers that are just at the beginning of their Christian life, they are very selfish. It's somehow it's like a, like a child, you know? You, you don't see children going to the kitchen and getting ingredients or leftovers or anything in order to prepare a meal for the adults. You, you don't see that. Usually the kid is the one who comes and says, Mom, I'm hungry. 
it's very, very unusual to see a child interested in serving his parents or adults or even other children for that matter. It's unusual. If you are a believer, you are going to go, go through, through stages in your Christian walk. And the first step is uh, obviously to be a baby Christian. A baby Christian or an infant in the Lord Jesus Christ is exactly that one that is just thinking about himself. And they all together said, we, we are about to die. Don't, don't you care? Don't you care? Of course the Lord cares my friend. But one good way that you can do self-evaluation about how mature you become is when you are thinking, going through storms in life, that the Lord God doesn't care. And it's very common to hear that expression in many people. I receive phone calls, messages from people People that are reaching out because they need help. People that are going through difficulties and it's our job in our church to give them support, to pray for them and help them. But one clear indication to me that someone, even if it's a believer, is just an immature believer or someone that is just starting his Christian walk is when this comment comes up. When they say, I don't really, I don't really care. I don't, think, I don't really think that God cares about me. I don't think God really cares about me. All my life, it has been that way, some of them say. You know, the same idea, God doesn't care. That is what the disciples said to the Lord. <laughs> Imagine that. Teacher, Master, Lord. We are about to die. Don't you care about us? <laughs> of course he cares, my friend. Let me tell you that there is no storm in your life that our Lord God cannot handle. Maybe you think that problem that you are going through right now, the challenges that you have, perhaps the difficulties and some of those things seem to be impossible to you. Well, this is absolutely normal for us human beings when we face difficulties that we feel a little bit defeated and in fact we say this is an impossibility I, I don't see how can I go through all this of course because you cannot handle it I cannot handle it but there is one that can handle it so you cannot make the mistake thinking that the Lord God cannot handle it because the Lord God is almighty. There is nothing impossible for our Lord God. His power creating Earth, the whole solar system, the whole universe. His power creating human life, humans. His power creating you. His power giving you gifts, attributes, qualities. His power by getting to know you. His power because he cares and loves you and he he's just watching. How do you respond in the midst of storms in your life? Don't you make the mistake, my friend, of thinking that the Lord God is not paying attention to you. But although the Lord God is paying attention to you, you are not the center of the universe. Life is not about you in general. Of course, your life is important in the eyes of God and in the eyes of the, those who love you. Your life is important. You are important for the Lord God and for those who love you. Those that are around you, you are important. However, you are not the center of the universe. Some people, very immature people, they get this idea that everybody has to be paying attention to themselves. Life is about the Lord God. 
And when you are in the middle of storms and troubles, what you need to think is that He is Almighty. He is the Lord God Almighty. There is no problem that He cannot fix. There is no storm that He cannot calm. Like that day on the boat, and the Lord Jesus spoke to the wind and the waves and the storm and said, Enough is enough, guys. Okay, calm down. And the scripture tells us that the lake became calm. If you think for a second about the experiences you have lived in the past, when you have seen the hand of the Lord in your life, providing for you and doing miracles in your life, you will remember that in the dark, in the darkest moment, in the toughest moments, days or nights, when you were going through those storms, the Lord there was there with you and you were about to see the miracle. But that moment of crisis was needed. So the Lord God can show up and prove how great He is, because He is. My friend, let me ask you this. Do you have faith in Him? Whatever kind of situations you are going through, whatever type of catastrophes, disasters, storms, do you have faith in Him? Do you trust enough in the Lord God to go through any type of storm and keep believing and trusting in Him, knowing that He has a plan for you? Because that is the type of faith that you will receive when you are close to the Lord God. Faith grows inside of you, my friend. When you have a problem and you feel that there is no solution, that you are defeated and you are abandoned by God, that the Lord God doesn't care, and this type of things, you know. You are just showing that you have very little faith. That is what the disciples said. Don't you care about us? We are about to die here. Really? The Lord Jesus said, obviously, you don't have enough faith, guys. What's wrong with you? You have been with me, but still you don't know who I am. You need to think about what you have experienced in your life. Maybe, my friend, the problem is that you have forgotten how many times the Lord has saved you. Because if you remember every single time when you were at the edge, how He put His hands to sustain you and hold you, when you didn't have the money He provided, when you were so sick, He healed you. When you were abandoned by people, He rescued you. When you were alone, He made you feel complete. When you were a total sinner, He washed away all your sins, forgave you, restored you, and made you holy. If you remember those things, you will say today to any type of storm, Shush, <laughs> be quiet, be still, because you will have faith. Faith comes when you are reflecting on God's Word. Faith will come to you when you are listening constantly to the Word of God. That is how you can go through all kinds of storms in life, my friend. Probably you are not investing enough time listening to God's Word. We provide a tool for any believer here in our Victory Church, Odessa. We have a broadcast 24-7. If you go to the website, thechurch.us, and you go there, you can choose audio or video 24-7. It doesn't matter what time of the day, what day of the week. It doesn't matter what kind of device you have, what kind of phone, computer, iPad, what type of TV. There are TV apps here. If you go to the website, you can have our channel on your smart TV. Roku TV, Apple TV, 
Amazon TV Fire Stick. You can watch on Facebook, you can watch on YouTube, my friend. But if you pay attention to what I am saying to you, in times of need, what you need is to hear God's word. So if you connect with our website, if you connect with our broadcast 24-7, you know what is going to happen? You will continue listening to God's Word. Music, songs, songs with the lyrics there. If you don't know the song, if you don't understand what the singer is saying, which happens quite often, you just read the lyrics there. All biblical. What kind of a storm are you going through, my friend? I don't care. Let me tell you this. It could be the worst storm that you could ever imagine. And still, you can become victorious in the name of Jesus. That is the power of our Lord God. But you, 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 my friend, need to show that faith. Trusting in Him, believing in Him. The difficulties that you have are just a little test of your faith. So learn to develop that victorious attitude by trusting in Him. Not even saying, I have faith. No. Trusting in Him. Say, my, my Lord God is Almighty. That is the most important thing that you need to remember that there is nothing impossible for our Lord if you are not a believer open your heart receive your forgiveness in your heart receive the Holy Spirit in your heart and tell the Lord God I commit to serve you the rest of the days of my life in the name of Jesus thank you for being here and I'll see you next week in these episodes and continue enjoying our broadcast. Thank you. Victory Radio is now available 24-7. Visit our website, www.victoryradio.us. Great music, positive messages, optimism to keep you company while you work, or when you drive, or when you are at home cooking. Faith is what you need. Faith comes when you hear the right thing. Victory Radio is the new thing. Find us on the website, www.victoryradio.us. Have a great rest of your day. If you own a Roku TV, a Roku TV device, an Apple TV device, or own a Fire Stick, we invite you to install the Geon TV app. With the Geon TV app installed on your TV, you will be able to watch all the videos from the comfort of your home and be inspired with our programs. Enjoy music, inspirational videos, Bible teachings, and beautiful videos that will keep your tank of faith full all the time at the touch of a button. Remember G on TV. Receive the inspiration to achieve your calling in life. By G and Carlo Vicitoro. I know you have suffered, but what if you would have never met your mom because she died giving birth to you? That's the beginning of Simon's story. Then Simon's father died when he was only 15 years old. He was sent to a foster home where he was bullied, humiliated, and there was no one to protect him. But Simon decided to find a way to get his revenge by studying and becoming good at sports. He won a scholarship, and soon he started his own business, Simon Yardwork. Mean people were envious of his success, but one day, Simon met and fell in love with Jackie. They were happy, until the FBI arrested Simon due to clues that incriminated him with several murdered people. Will Simon end up in prison? Don't miss the outcome of this story, The Best Revenge, the musical that will inspire everyone to pay good for evil. Go to mygiancarlo.com to purchase The Best Revenge on audio and video. Welcome to this website, MyNewMentor.com. Here you will find the tools to establish a direct communication with your new mentor, Gian. 
get the available spot on Gion's schedule and set your appointment to have an audio or video call via Skype with Gion. Do you like new movies, new books, new music? Go to mygiancarlo.com. There is a new album, Adore, 10 songs. I wrote the songs and I sing those songs with a wonderful band of musicians and singers. If you sign up in mygiancarlo.com, I will give you one song for free. Take advantage of this free song and enjoy this wonderful production. The blessings of God are going to come to you when you are listening to the right thing, God's Word. You can find us in all of these platforms. Search for Gian TV on Apple TV, Roku TV, and Fire TV. Do you prefer a podcast? Find us too. And remember Victory Radio 24-7. The kingdom of God is near. Thank you for investing time with Victory Church Odessa. Feel free to subscribe to our channel here on this platform. Also, you can go to our website, vchurch.us, to connect with the rest of the platforms where you can follow us. Our address is 2400 West 81st Street, Odessa, Texas, 79764. Our Sunday worship service begins at 10 a.m. Our phone number is 432-614-9798. Our email address is info at vchurch.us. Feel free to share this program with your family and friends. Until next time, we wish you a wonderful rest of your day. Many blessings in the name of our Lord Jesus.